ready. Okay. So I will call to order the select board meeting of Tuesday, September 11th, 2018. And the first item is approval of the agenda. I'll move to accept the agenda. Second. Moved and seconded. Are there any changes? I'd like to note that uh, item five, uh, Fred Kenny's not able to be here um, with us as a, a result of a family uh, situation. And so uh, we're gonna move that back. Uh, Karen uh, will, will join us uh, from the Better, Better Middlebury uh, Partnership uh, in a little bit later. She's got a meeting at seven o'clock. So that's kind of the only change I have. There are no other changes. All in favor of the agenda, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Okay, next is approval of the minutes of our August 28th select board meeting. Move the adoption or approval. I'll second it. Moved and seconded. Uh, are there any amendments or changes that anybody noted? I have a few. Okay. I have. You do too? No, no, just one. But I is, wasn't is it here. line 148? Yes. Okay. <laughs> <coughs> so um, just note that I seconded that. Weiger grows as um, infrastructure. Mm -hmm. Okay. Judy's infrastructure. I didn't know if I could even make a change because I wasn't here. So mm -hmm. yeah, but it was obvious to you. Yes. Yes. Okay. And then I had another note okay. on line. Um, 236, oh my goodness. <laughs> 236. 236, so this is um, with regard to the conversation with um, the Better Middlebury Partnership and Neighbors Together, and it regarded other suggestions. <coughs> so um, I just would like added, you know, a, a recommendation that I made, Kathleen, which was that they consider benches with charges chargers to complement positioning downtown as friendly for gathering and Wi-Fi. What line was that? Uh, to, I recommend that it be added at line 236, oh, which is toward the end one. of the conversation. <clears throat> yeah. So it said the ceremony asked when their regular meeting was, and Malcolm said it was last Monday of the month. And then I, I went on to make a recommendation. Oh, okay. And I just want that noted because I think that that would be a really important enhancement to the downtown. Okay. Additional benches and possibly benches with chargers in them. So I just wanted that noted. Any other? Okay. All in favor of the amended minutes, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? One abstention. And one abstention, thank you. Okay, next um, is citizen comments. Uh, I will note for the listening audience who can't see that our, our two um, House representatives are here with us, uh, Amy Sheldon and Robin Shai. Uh, welcome to our meeting. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Uh, so next would be um, Dan. We're going to go right to you. Our director of public work, works has got an update uh, and a lot of business covered tonight. Thank you. Okay, first item is a um, uh, recommendation on the next steps for Creek Road. Um, in your packet, there are several items that, that uh, pertain to Creek Road. Um, uh, quite lengthy I don't know if you've had time to look through them but the point of it is there's a lot of information about Creek Road and what we've been dealing with over the past few years um, <clears throat> uh, Kathleen I think did an excellent summary of some of the situation down there so we discussed some of this at the last infrastructure committee meeting um, and there was a, a, a recommendation by the committee to try to do some major some minor repairs to the road um, within the 20,000 it was in the budget but we corrected that to 40,000 honestly that doesn't do much of anything to the situation of the road so um, we feel it's kind of time that that the board takes a ride down Creek Road and see what's changed since the 2015 closure there are four or five now places where the bank has sloughed off into the river 
or into the creek and um, um, makes for hazardous travel. So um, we're asking that um, you warn a select board visit to the Creek Road area on October 9th and meet here at 5 o'clock and uh, go take a tour with us. Does that work with everyone's schedule? October 9th? October 9th at Nine 5 o'clock. What day is that? It's a Tuesday, Tuesday before, our before the board meeting. Yeah. Yeah, that makes <clears throat> we could probably arrange for a sandwich in between, Kathleen. Yeah, so if that works for everyone, uh, then um, we'll go ahead and uh, Kathleen will. So what time are you saying? We would, we would meet here at 5 okay. and, then, and then go to um, down the Creek Road, show you some of the sites, have a conversation, and then come back and before the board and discuss. Meeting. Yeah. I know reading Kathleen's um, very um, thorough rendition of and encapsulation of all the critical points, it has changed since we last really dove into it at the select board level. And I'd like to, I certainly think it would be beneficial for all of us to get down and have some eyes on it and have you walk us through what some of the concerns, um, see what some of the potential fixes are and and talk through uh, that before we actually get into the discussion of it at the select board level. Right. So, yeah, great idea. Thanks. So you want to delay any discussion tonight? I would like to. I, th I don't think it's uh, productive. I think it would uh, be better once we've all actually seen it and, and so that everybody can, can envision what we're talking about. Could I just offer one thing for okay. us to think about? Yeah. Um, you know, in terms of the use of the road, and the future of the road, like, is this going to be an all-season um, car access road, or do we see it as seasonal car access road, or is it even something else, like it just becomes more of a, a bike pit path, you know, with some limited access for farmers that need, or, or those that live out there, or emergency vehicles to occasionally get out there. So I just think, I just want to offer that to the select board is, some of the bigger picture things to think about with regard to the future of Creek Road. Yeah, and there are there is some discussion of that in all in those notes. Um, just just to add to Laura's comment, um, uh, Sheriff Keeler brought to my attention that the Supreme Court has ruled that property owners own the property under a road, and I think that we'll have to consider that when talking about bike path trail conversations. So. Okay, in terms of permission. You mean that they would still require access from the road? No, that the property owners own the road. Own the road? They own the property that the road sits oh, on. Really? And oh. that, that's what the Supreme Court oh. has ruled in <coughs> cases. Mm. And <coughs> so I think that when we consider possibly okay. changing the status <coughs> of the road, then it, <coughs> it may go back to the property owners. And that was the indication that Sheriff Keeler told me the Supreme Court has ruled recently. Okay, so, so. Well, your notes indicated that we might be legally obligated to keep the road open. Is that still the case or true? I saw that by, in the notes. By state statute, yes. The, we mm -hmm. are obligated to maintain and and keep open roads. And And depending upon their classification. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it's a pretty complicated discussion, and I'm not sure that one. Sheriff Keeler's got all of the, the legal statute. I think that would be something for Ben to delve into. Mm -hmm. okay. um, Just one quick question. What constitutes keeping a road open? I mean, what kind of use do you need to maintain on it? Is there, is there? Well, <clears throat> you can have, um, and that's a class three road. You can have a class four road, which means that you don't have to do much maintenance to it. You could, um, of course, class four roads don't get any, you know, uh, uh, state um, uh, funding award, mm -hmm. you know, for fu for funding for maintenance. You could uh, call it, you know, de degrade it to a trail. Um, you can still maintain a right of way, I believe, without having a physical passable road on it so there are a lot of ways to keep it open 
Right. You can out. you can decide to discontinue a portion of that road mm -hmm. based on the fact that it's been impacted by flood damage. There's many options okay. to consider. But yeah. I know we looked at the right of way that we still uh, retained on the properties over um, on the back side of the of the middle school. Right. Middle and road. Middle road. Thank you. And uh, you know we hadn't done anything with that for years, and yet we still held the right away. Right, right away, yeah. So I, I think it's a complex thing, and it, we we ought to look at it and then talk about where we want to go with it, and then we could get the actual legal opinions of whether they work and what the, some of the concerns and um, obligations are. Right. <coughs> One did thing I did request of Kathleen at infrastructure was some idea of legal costs, you know, so we would also yep. have have that idea of in the picture of because yep. there's obviously a procedure mm -hmm. legally, you know, to change and, the use. Right. That, yeah, well, I read just, that in your just to go through any variety of scenarios and yeah. just to have some idea of what those costs are too. Yep. So I spoke to town attorney Benj Putnam about that, and he estimated $2,500 for the legal fees. For which? To, to downgrade which the road. To, to make a change in the status of the road. Yeah. <coughs> that was helpful. Okay, that's all. Okay. All right, so we're going we're gonna to go ahead and warn that, and we'll plan to join you and have you educate us. Thank you, Dan. Okay. <clears throat> Next item is... Um, Do we need a motion on that? I don't think so. What's that? It's asking us to make a motion here. Okay. So, I don't know. I, I see that. Uh, what on it? Why don't you go ahead and give sure. us a motion? Yeah. So, I would like to make a motion to mm -hmm. warn a select board site visit to Creek Road to discuss proposed repairs for 5 p.m., on Tuesday, October 9th, 2018. Second. Move second. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Okay, thank you, Proud. Could I just offer one thing? Becky, um, we're not doing the discussion on the Economic Health Committee if you were here for that. Yeah, we are going to do it. No, we are doing oh, it. Oh, but later. It's just delayed because uh, Fred had an emergency. I know that. I was yeah. here to be in his stead. Thank you. Oh, you are, you're going to do it. Very good. Okay. No, I had been told Karen was going to do it, so. That was the last we had heard. Karen didn't ask me to do it. Okay. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> I got you on the menu. <laughs> so, Dan, while you're at it, why don't you take care of that? Okay. <laughs> All right, next item is... Uh, um, a recommendation to award a bid for engineering for pump station improvements. Uh, <clears throat> these are pump stations from for the wastewater system. Um, I requested proposals from engineering firms to help us do improvements to uh, pump station 6, which is Seminary Street, um, pump station 13, which is out on Helpin Road, and pump station 14, which is in Painter Hills. Uh, just to the south side of, of uh, Painter Quarry uh, Road out there. And um, actually not Quarry, Painter Road. Um, anyway, the low bidder on the, on the work is Otter Creek Engineering, and they submitted a, a bid of 93600 uh, The improvements are going to include um, uh, changing these pump stations to submersible pump stations. Right now there are... Uh, one is a submersible, but it is a steel tube uh, put in many decades ago, which is suffering some corrosion issues. The other two are what we call a can station. They have um, below grade uh, wet, uh, dry wells. The equipment is down there. You have to crawl down a ladder. It's confined space. Uh, we'd like to get rid of that situation. Um, and then uh, include a generator uh, for the pump station six. Uh, Seminary Street Station, and then connections for generator at uh, 13 and 14. So there's a variety of improvements, new pumps, you know, um, uh, new technology to operate them and communicate, and so on and so forth. So uh, that's the kind of the general extent of the work, and I'm asking you to approve Otter Creek Engineering's proposal for 93600 
I'll make the motion that we award a contract to Otter Creek Engineering for engineering design services for improvements to three sanitary sewer pump stations for a total cost of $93,600. Second. Second. Moved and seconded. Are there any questions? I just want to note that I'm really glad to see it happening because we know from looking at our electric bill that those pumps run 24-7 and they're one of the highest electric hits for the town of Middlebury. So can't get it done fast enough. <laughs> and that was in the budget or no problem? In with the it? wastewater capital uh, okay. fund, yes. All right. If there's no other questions, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? All right. Uh, <clears throat> next item is a uh, uh, recommendation on award to, uh, for bid for fencing around the Chipman Hill <coughs> Reservoir. Um, it's one of the requirements the state has asked us to take care of this year. Um, they do what they call sanitary surveys of all the water systems in the state periodically. That was one of our on our checklist that they wanted us to take care of and that's a security fence around the reservoir. So I um, requested bids from area um, fence companies. I received two back. Uh, the low bidder is 802 Fence Company, LLC, and their bid was $14,735. Um, the uh, other bid was uh, quite a bit higher. I'm not sure if I have that number with me. Um, but anyway, I checked the references for 802 Fence Company and um, glowing reports very conscientious great work crew efficient um, so I'm requesting the board to approve contract 802 fence company for 14,735 I'll make a motion to award a contract to 802 fence company for construction of a perimeter fence around Chipman Hill Reservoir at a total cost of 14,735 second and seconded uh, Dan, the other one was uh, $19,825. Yes, I got it. <laughs> Thanks. Cedar Ledge Fence was at $19,825. Just one quick comment. Um, before and after photos, when this work is all done, would be great for a uh, town meeting. Sure. Because most people, you know, you know, won't have seen that area, and we've done mm -hmm. a lot of work, work up there this year. So. Okay. Good idea. Any questions of Dan? You're none. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Okay. Okay, the next item is a <clears throat> request to approve an engineering amendment for Pump Station 9 overflow monitoring. Pump Station 9 is out on Waybridge Street, um, almost Pump Mill Bridge Road on the right-hand side. It takes care of uh, the waste uh, from like Gorham Lane, Morningside, uh, the Waybridge uh, area that we serve and part of Waybridge Street. Um, what this project does is, is it's an engineering design and bid phase services for uh, an overflow structure to monitor how much uh, wastewater uh, overflows in storm events and ends up in Otter Creek. Um, we, the, this is part of the overflow control plan that we, w we submitted to US EPA. Um, what we'll get from this is the amount of uh, gallons that we will need to store in a storm event so we don't uh, have any more overflows going out of creek. We do not know how much that overflow is. And so this is a small structure uh, with flow, mon flow monitoring equipment um, that we will be able to, over a period of many, many months, if not a couple or three years, till we determine how much was actually going over. So that's what this contract is for, is for design of that small structure. I'll make a motion to award a contract to Aldridge and Elliott for the final design and bid services for an overflow metering structure at Pump Station 9 at a cost of $5,900. Second. Moved and seconded. Any questions of Dan? There are none. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? The last item is a request to award a bid uh, to D.H. Cameron Construction of North Ferrisburg. Um, I sent out um, and advertised uh, from Galeria contractors to do some repairs for a public works building. 
Um, the uh, some of the doors are are rusty. Uh, the frames are rusty. Uh, the trim and the fascia and the soffit is is wood. There's certainly a, a moisture problem within that building because of the you know we bring wet trucks in and snow laden trucks and so on and so forth. So it's doing a number on the wood fascia uh, of the building. So uh, requested bids for replacing the the fascia and some of the doors. Uh, Cameron was the only bidder. Um, they are also a, uh, uh, a company that does a lot of work on Butler buildings. Ours is a Butler building, so he's very familiar with it. Um, but at this point, we can't afford everything that uh, needed to be done. So currently, I'm going to ask for approval of uh, the work to do the w replace the wood fascia and trim with metal. That was his recommendation, um, and I certainly agree with that. And then replace the North Workshop door. That's the one that, that's used most frequently. It's, it's corroded away at the bottom um, and needs to be fixed. So that work total for the trim and the door um, uh, amounts to $14,300. Requesting the board to approve that amount. I'll make a motion to award a contract to D.H. Cameron Construction Company for the repairs to the Public Works Building at a cost of $14,300. Second. Moved and seconded. Questions of Dan? Well, yes, and the Infrastructure <coughs> Committee, because I know that we're talking about the big picture of the Public Works Building, so I understand that sometimes you have to do, like we did with the library, some modest measures until we figure out the bigger picture. But where is the discussion on the bigger picture for the public works building? On hold? Yeah, we, we have a, a, a small item in the, in the capital request to look at starting to more, do much more extensive planning for the public works site. Um, but that's a well, just some additional context of that right now we're focusing on the adaptive reuse of the buildings at the uh, wastewater station. treatment facility yeah. to address the storage issues first and then would move on to tackle um, public works okay yeah i saw that we were looking at those buildings too i just <laughs> yeah there's just i mean there's i Plenty I think, to do. <laughs> I think we're pretty. The yes, staff is something. staff is pretty. Yeah. Maxed out with projects, not even considering that one right now. So, at least that's my. They can comment differently. That's my interpretation. <laughs> no argument. No, I know. No, I think we're pacing the work. I know that you know, and I know that you had to make a hard decision about how much to put into this old building, and that we're doing the minimum that we need to do until we get to the next solution. Okay, thank I, you. I don't think it's a waste of money, the investments we're doing in the building, so. No, that building will still have value. Yeah. yeah. It's somewhat just tired. It's been there yeah. since the. You have to maintain it or it will lose its value. Right. We also have to Plus, safeguard that fleet. Right. Yeah. A whole lot of money sitting in there. And part of it is extending longevity of the vehicle, so that's in and of itself helps with our energy issues. Otherwise, it will get like our old town offices yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay if there are no other questions for Dan all in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. aye aye those opposed thank you Dan are there any other questions while well, we have Dan here anything to do with, with infrastructure Can I just ask reports? something about item 6b the 93,600 uh, I see a big difference between the low and the high bidders in that uh, up to a hundred thousand dollars in the highest bid why is that such a big difference? Um, I think sometimes um, bidders are apt to throw a number out in case there isn't much competition. Yeah. I have a hunch that might be it, but they're also quite a ways away. Okay. Uh, and so for them to, you know, back and forth, back and forth, uh, I think would be, uh, is part of that cost too, so. One of the things I'm seeing, I'm trying to build a couple buildings, and I'm seeing uh, there's more work than there is people to do it. Mm -hmm. And so, like Dan says, I think some of them are throwing a number out to make, you know, if they're going to take a small job, it's going to be worth their while because, because they have to motivate, they have to, they have to, to uh, they have to move all their equipment gear there, and they've got to motivate your your workers to 
go the extra distance, so you're probably paying them extra. And I wouldn't be doubtful of what they would plan in their lodging expense, meals expense, all kinds of additional things that maybe a local contractor wouldn't. Right. Best, best guess. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, thanks, Dan. Thank you. Becky, we will uh, address your agenda item right now if it okay. works for you. Sure. Um, Karen just texted me that she's on her way, so we'll do two of us. Do you want me to sit up? Uh, sure, just come on up uh, up to the hot seat. Okay. But, uh, so this is agenda item, uh, the uh, Middlebury Economic Health Committee um, had some discussions and they were kind of, uh, Becky's going to bring us up to date on some of those discussions and a request for um, a, a change in the committee's charge and timeline. So I'll just jump right into the request for the change in the charge. Sure. Um, I believe that you all have that in front of you. Um, it was sort of tripartite. Um, the charge we felt was rather um well at first we felt it was rather vague but then after some discussion we found it um excessively specific um so we made some changes to the to the wording um in the first couple of paragraphs and we also felt that the timeline was way too short to adequately address the issues that we'd been asked to address um, and we felt very strongly that there needed to be a very modest budget so that we could um, join um, specifically an, the Main Streets Alliance. I'm not sure what the actual name of the organization is, but I, um, we felt that there were a few modest expenses we might like to um, use some funds for. So we've asked for a small budget to do that. Um, as you remember, uh, both myself, I mean, and I'm pleased that what you're suggesting. You know. It was a. I, I felt it was a very good meeting um, the other day. Brian was there, and um, I felt like we covered a lot of ground. I do like. Uh, I, I think there was certainly some really worthwhile tweaking because we talked in the charge of economic development tools but really um, the intent was to cover things like policies strategies and actions that the town can do with our limited resources uh, that would that would positively impact economic health and so um, a, a very good uh, as far as I see a very good amendment to the charge and, uh, and I would be very supportive of that um, and then when you look down to some of the specifics, you know, we talked about retail. When we were having our discussion, there was a lot of, you know, we were thinking about empty storefronts, but really we're talking about all business opportunities within Middlebury. And, and so, uh, you know, I think that their discussion helped flush out and you know, maybe make the charge a better charge. Um, I've spent some time kind of reading and thinking about it, and I was concerned about the extended timeline. Um, if the committee is supportive of that I think it, it helps keep uh, the yeah. discussion going I think the one thing that I like that I was concerned about is there were some things that we thought maybe were more immediate that could come back as recommendations and that they they do provide in their um, in their timeline the, the ability to provide interim recommendations to the board which um, is they find something that's maybe more specific more actionable um, that those could come out of that committee as they emerge and the committee has consensus on them. So I, um, I, I'm kind of, comf I'm pretty comfortable with, with the amendments given those um, haven't thought about it and, and processed it. And, and so um, I'm looking for thoughts of the rest of the select board. And if we are good, then I would look for us to uh, approve their their recommendations so they could move forward, and then we can. We, then we need to talk about the financing part. So maybe two parts here. Yeah. Can I ask a 
Can I make a request? Absolutely. Can we um, specify progress reports rather than just periodically? <coughs> Would that be reasonable? Like, could we get... Like quarterly we, or something? Yeah, could we... Assume. I mean, just... I would just, I would like to follow it, um, which I'll do. Regular? Would you say regular or? No, I wanted like to specify. Right, but what's like, your spec? What's your? How often do you? Do you no, like like December or y you know. Um. And that's just a suggestion. But you're talking just annual or? No, no, no. Like specify like, you know, like. Three times, and that's so what I'm asking. Well, how like, often would you like like setting like so? So what? What are we? Uh, September. So how about January for a report, and how about May April? And so so they have so they have an an actual timeline for when we're looking for prog you know some kind of progress report rather than just an open ended periodic. Right. So then would we? ask that maybe someone from the committee give us um, a update quarterly if is that what you're looking for yeah i mean i, I think maybe quarterly may even be more every than every three months yeah. yeah that's fine is i was that, just looking for something more often uh, that you I'm, I'm just looking trying to process what it It'd I'm be nice if we could have a proposal because we need something concrete. Yeah, I'm not necessarily concrete. looking for more often. I'm just looking for something that sets more specificity. As, as an idea of when we'd like to see reports rather than an open-ended periodically. That, that was the only thing. Not necessarily that I wanted monthly reports or a certain timeline, just that we... Kathleen, how often have some of the others um, reported three times a year, four times a year? Why don't we go for four times a year and... So quarterly? We'll provide progress for reports to the Starting board quarterly. Starting January, sure. seem reasonable? Yeah. If it quick. seems too often and not enough happens, we can always bump it back, but maybe we start with that? Yeah, I think that's totally appropriate. I think Fred's request sort of intended to be that as progress was made and we had actual right. something to report that we would come back, but I don't see anything wrong with with setting a quarterly and certainly if we need to have additional communication between that window, we can do that too. Well, and it may be a, a, a brief report sometimes. Sure. Mm -hmm. so. mm -hmm. We see the minutes of yeah course. I was gonna say the minutes are public um, I'm wondering in that sense um, if we well I mean I, I don't object to having a you know specific time but 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 the minutes are available and I rather enjoyed reading the minutes from the last one so that it yeah uh, I was I, trying my to only thought on that is that we don't ask other committees to report to us any more quarterly or anything like that Except that this committee was originally supposed to be a short-term, right. you know, results-driven committee. And so I would, would just like to see that we've set guidelines for when we'd like to see some kind of progress, I guess. Understanding that sometimes things take longer than we expect, but well, I just wanted it a little less open-ended, that's all. Well, that was we, would try, we would try with the quarterly. I mean, it's it, to me, it's really when they achieve a benchmark, and we don't know what those are yet. Right. So, if we try it for the first quarter, let's like, see where it is, and that's fine. Um, but, uh, but overall, I, I I like the recommendations. I mean, part of what I like about this group is we put together a, a really bright bunch of people who can think beyond conventional thought, and so. Everything that's being asked for it makes perfectly good sense. We knew in the beginning, at least in my mind, it would be a dynamic aspect of starting the thing off. So no objection to the recommendations. The timeline, uh, my biggest thought with the timeline was just because we didn't want to overstress the people who were on the, on the group realizing everybody's busy. But if, in fact, it's, and it's what I'm hearing is people are committed enough to really get this thing right and to take the time it takes to do it, then take the time. Let's get it, get it right. 
And I agree. I just would like to hope that we have something to start implementing because I think that was the hope of the short time frame mm -hmm. is that we would start to have things to implement. So all I'm I just want to see some prog progress and yeah. some things that we can maybe start to do in that two year time. That's all I think I'm looking for. So I think the concern seems to be that by lengthening the time, does the sense of urgency around it get diminished or and that we don't have anything to implement sure. in that time so i think that's a message that we can bring back to this committee is that you know we should be setting some sort of incremental goals to be reaching along the way in regards to progress well things that you identify that we can do to mm -hmm. to make changes i think the sooner we can put those in rather than waiting for a report at the end of two years Agreed. would be mm -hmm. great in my opinion yep. yeah yeah that, that's a good point it's an easy thing and for i guess that's what i was maybe not communicating well is that i just don't want the results of the work to get pushed out two years so is that i think but we did talk about it in our meeting that we are, we are asking for the two years but meanwhile if there's a benchmark that we achieve we will update the select board yeah. regardless of when that was Right. Yeah, that's exactly right. Yeah, yeah. that was the initial. Uh, we had the extensive discussion about that. The charge itself is so, so big. Uh, November 13th is not a uh, consumable uh, date for us. That's why we requested the longer date. I, I think it, it states that you'll reply, provide progress reports to the board periodically, and I, I, I just think if you started making it more specific you're it's going to get an artificial committee report when we can keep up with the activity of the committee by reading the minutes and um, or attending the meetings if we choose but yeah but it, um, it's not about a report it's about having something to start implementing before the two years I guess for me well, maybe, maybe they it will takes and longer. maybe they won't. Right. I, I think that's... I hear what you're saying, though, is when, when something, a, a benchmark is achieved and said this, there's something the town can do to, to enhance opportunities that we right. know about that as soon as possible so that we can start doing some, that, that solution. Right, and just... And, and, and those, are, those are these benchmarks. Uh, and so they're, the, the exact times, well, that's, again, it's somewhat abstract, is when that proper point is. And, and this may be a bad example, but it's the only one I have. Like, you know, when we had the business here wanting um, the the tax deal, what did he, mm -hmm. the revolving loan fund or no, the tax yes, stabilization? Yeah, tax right. stabilization. And I had hoped that we could offer that business some type of help sooner rather than later that might fit better, and re maybe a revolving loan fund. May I don't know, mm -hmm. but I just feel. Like if it's going to take two years for some of that stuff, and maybe it does. And yeah. I, you know, this is probably a case where things take longer than I hope they will. So. Well, I I think that they have pledged to a continuing dialogue and analysis of it. But the one thing that I had the same concern because we're looking for some things that that may be the easy pickings to come out of it. And I I think that they have. Uh, made it clear they're going to bring any of those things that are interim to us ahead of time and that maybe we just support the, the amended charge and um, ask that, that they communicate to the board that we feel a sense of urgency to do whatever we can and that we want to hear those things come forward as they can come to consensus on it and not to hold them for a more comprehensive report. And I'm not really looking for like. I know. A rep I'm not looking for you guys. You know, I'm not. Anyway. Well, and there are things that could come out of the out of the committee, and and, and Farhad's part of our part of the committee, and and so he right. could bring them to us, so that they're we're not tying them up. They're already giving a lot of times. So maybe that's a better way to mm -hmm. to handle it. Is it? Um, that we support the change as written and then just ask that as those things come that they do get to us so we can mm -hmm. get them started as soon as we can. That's, I think, in line with the goals of this committee, 100%. Um, you know, we have talked about this idea, too, of low-hanging fruit. 
you know, what are the things you can do immediately? What are the things that need a little bit longer planning and process? Um, so, yeah. And we are, I don't know if Becky mentioned, but we are um, meeting twice a month. Twice a month, yeah. I saw that. So oh. um, that's going to be a standing, a standing meeting going forward. And I think that the group was, was really sort of demonstrated that commitment. You know, certainly for me, I would much rather have something take a, a much longer time uh, and feel like my time has been worth putting into it. Um, then feel like we rushed through something and didn't actually end up with anything real as a result. Um, so I would much rather give two years at a, at a bi-monthly meeting yeah. if we feel like we can get something really impactful out of it. I do think it allows you time to do some research and, and, and yes. analysis and actually um, absorb all the data and then have quality discussion over yeah. it as, as opposed to trying to rush through to a decision in a short period of time. So I, yeah, and well, and to consider the, the bigger view. I think that yeah. when, we, when we really got down in deep to the original charge, it was clear that there were some very specific things that you all were looking for. Um, and I think the committee brought a lot of other ideas. Yeah. And while those things can be easily addressed, well, not necessarily easily, but can be addressed right away, there may be a lot of other ways of yeah. looking at the issue. Um, and it, a couple of years, meeting a couple of times a month seems much more doable than delivering something undeliverable in a very short time frame. Yeah. yeah. Well, we appreciate the committee uh, making that that commitment of their time, and and uh, you know, it's, we we felt we were asking a lot of the committee to begin with. So um, it's nice that we got so many people that are willing to give. So um, pleasure of the board on the revised committee charge. I'll make a motion to approve the revised economic health committee charge as presented by. Committee Chair Fred Kenny. Uh, can, as presented by the our Vice Chair? As or? presented by He's Karen and Becky. Fred. Speaking, speaking for Fred. For Fred yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so no it. changes then, even after our discussion? No. Okay. Seconded. Okay. We'll be seconded. In. Any questions on that? Comments? No, okay. I appreciated the minutes, and I appreciate Victor's point about the minutes being a vehicle for us to stay informed and, and that we could attend if we want to be more active and participating in the conversation. And I, I appreciate how robust it is. So, um, That's why we put good people we'll on speed the committee. Ahead. <laughs> okay, so uh, here are no con um, questions. All in favor of the revised health committee charge signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Okay, and then um, the committee's coming to us with a request for a $1,500 committee budget. Kathleen, can you just talk us through, uh, can we take that out of, uh, since this is for economic health committee, can we take that out of our funds uh, that we have remaining? You could earmark $1,500 from the MBDF fund, Middlebury yep. Business Development Fund, which has a balance of just over $82,000 in it currently. Okay, and, and the, um, just so that the committee would understand, what um, would that need to come to you for approval, or how do you, right. what it controls? Well, I would think you it would be useful if the committee drew up a, like a little budget of what it sees as potential line items. Um, just to call to attention, as Karen knows, anything over $500 requires a purchase order in advance of the purchase. And they would deal directly with you on this? Yep. yep. Okay. Any comments from, from you two before the board addresses it? No. I mean, this was raised by one of the committee members as sort of as needed mm -hmm. um, and in reference to specifically research and, and um, some yep. resources that are available by um, that you need to pay for. Required so dues. yeah, so we'll um, as as that comes about, we'll follow the process. But I think there was one particular subscription that uh, they were thinking of initially that they felt uh, would would help inform the committee on some of what's out there on on community economic development. Yeah, it's three hundred and fifty dollars. Right. So but if the, we see something like that in the first week of 
<laughs> meeting there may be other things going on. Yeah. And, and um, when Heather and I met with the committee, we talked about maybe a small budget so that they didn't have to keep coming back to the select board, but if they saw a, a larger need, then they would present that back to the select board. Sure. Questions from the board? Yeah. Comments? Pleasure of the board. I would also like to move to approve a $1,500 committee budget to be used for conducting research re relevant to its charge with all expenditures to be approved by town manager Kathleen Ramsey. Second. Moved and seconded. Any questions, comments? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Okay, thank you again, and we're excited to uh, see what comes out of this committee. Yeah. You know, it's a, quite, a, quite a lineup of, of people that are very successful and have a lot of experience. So, All right. thank, thank, thank you. you. Good okay, now we're going to seven, uh, which I believe uh, now Senator Bray's here too. We've got all of our legislators. They want to hear what we think about the Vermont League of Cities and Towns legislative platform, I believe. So <clears throat> the proposed platform um, and municipal policy uh, was in the, our packet. Mm -hmm. And I think Kathleen maybe can walk us through it. Did we already, uh, or do we have to uh, make you our voting delegate? We made you our voting delegate, right? Yes. Sorry. Last one. <laughs> Last, okay. last, last meeting. So uh, as Brian noted, the uh, draft policy is in your packet. Uh, notice went out uh, via our email list of uh, 700 people. We did receive two replies in response to that, one from Victoria DeWin concerned about um, publication of notice for public meetings. Um, that's in your packet, her email is. And then a second <coughs> one from Jack and Chip Mayor about um, the 350 uh, resolution, incorporating that in its entirety um, into the VLCT municipal policy. Um, John. Chair, uh, speaking on behalf of the Vermont Press Association, I'm the former president and current board member. Uh, we would also object uh, to two provisions specifically in the open meeting law public notice category. Uh, the first is in the proposed increasing from five business days to ten business days for getting draft minutes out on the website. And then uh, the notion of putting legal ads online and bypassing the print. I realize that's somewhat self-serving, working for a newspaper, but uh, they are not only a revenue base, but as Victoria uh, brought up in her communication, there are people that don't refer to computers and faithfully look at that portion of the newspaper to uh, find out about their illegal news. Mm -hmm. I understand that one. Why the um, concern about moving from five to 10 business days? Well, the nature of our business is changing. People want their news more quickly, and uh, if we can't, we can't cover, for example, us, 23 communities simultaneously. So we rely upon these municipal websites to get news. And if we're waiting 10 days, <coughs> business days, uh, for this kind of basic information, it, it's it's not good for anybody. Yeah. So what's the downside? Why would this be asked for? Five to ten versus five. I mean, what's the what's the opposing argument to it? Well, the VLCT would <coughs> might argue that, especially in communities where there is a small staff, part-time staff, mm -hmm. that uh, and that when their uh, town office hours are very limited, that it's a hardship, quote unquote, to get a draft of some minutes online within five business days. But our argument would be, you know, if you have somebody taking minutes at these meetings, you could even take a screenshot, upload that onto your 
folks say in fairly short order, and they don't have to be very elaborate minutes. They can be very basic, uh, and uh, the final product could be more elaborate. But that initial those initial minutes that you would post need only reflect the action taken and what the vote was. Okay, I hear you. Thanks. <clears throat> when I was doing minutes for the DRB. Um, we would post um, what we called um, mini minutes fairly quickly that just showed um, um, motions, uh, results, you know, you know, without a lot of the discussion covered in it. And then we took more time to, like what John said, fill out the minutes with the yeah. discussion part and then post those later. Mm -hmm. But the information of the decisions was posted pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. That's a good point, that it doesn't mandate that they be the absolute com comprehensive minutes. Yeah, thank you. Uh, comments? Any other comments? I'm, I guess on item two, right, right at the beginning, um, I'm, I'm in favor of local decision making, but I, I guess I'm, I'm a bit concerned about um, Municipal charter provisions, implementation on on local voters' adoption. Um, the practice now is it not that uh, these go to the legislature? Charter changes. Mm -hmm. Is that correct? Yeah, they do. Um, and I'm not sure exactly what a home rule amendment to the Vermont Constitution uh, would amount to. I mean, we are. We have a system of government and we, in which we have sort of governments nested in governments. We have town government, we have the state government, we have a legislature, um, and, a, and of course a, a, a state executive. And um, I, uh, it, uh, just sounds like the Fourth of July. I mean, I I uh, I, I, I approve of of, of uh, local independence. I'm I'm sometimes annoyed by the fact that uh, we're restricted sometimes by state uh, uh, regulations, for example, in controlling um, speed limits on certain roads and so on. And uh, um, and I wish in in certain instances there was more local decision making that would be determinative. But it seems to me that the, the charter is the constitution of a town, and a town is not a sovereign state. It's, it's a government um, within uh, the state of Vermont, and uh, the fact that, that charters are go to the, to the legislature for approval, it seems to me, is a recognition of that fact. Um, and. Um, I think that, I mean, I, I, I would not vote for this. In fact, I mean, that item, I think, is, is um, subversive, <laughs> to, to say the least. Was that always the league stance? So we're just looking at it right now. Mm -hmm. okay. huh? I was asking if it was there before, because it was hard for me to discern in the policy what's new. You know, well, um, whether it's new or old, I, I mean, right. I'm talking about the principle that it, it, that it states, not whether, I, I, I think I've seen it before, mm -hmm. um, and I've objected to it before in uh, 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 but I, and I, and I find it not, not acceptable. It seems to me that um, it goes too far. In, in local control. So would you be comfortable ending it after the first uh, semicolon, number two? Or just after the first comma? <laughs> um, <laughs> now again, I, I, uh, I, <laughs> I guess maybe after the first comma. Um, uh, but I, 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 I could not, I mean, I, I really find that in principle that that's not a, an acceptable article. Does 
Senator Bray. Uh, good evening, sir. If, if you want to come forward. Yeah, um, we can't hear you. So that, because we, we're actually televised, so um, I all, forgot all that the part. viewers will be able to hear you if right. you can speak close to the mic. Sure. So, uh, good evening. My name is Chris Bray. I'm one of your two state senators. I, I'm from New Haven. Um, I served two years on government op Senate government operations, so we did, I, I lost track of the count, but uh, dozens of charter changes. So, um, you know, there is discussion, and they come through the legislature, and I've never seen one declined, but, uh, you know, I've, I was only in government operations two years, so I think really why I, I came up to the chair was to ask, has Middlebury brought things forward to the legislature in the form of a charter change and then been declined, or was it, does it rub people the wrong way, or is it that you've actually not been able to get something done that you would like to have had? changed in the charter. So it, just to be clear, this is the VLCT right. municipal policy sure. uh, that's coming forward. We have presented charter changes and they have been approved. Right. Like the local option tax, I remember, was a right. uh, And we also major one. changed the auditor, um, yeah. no. elected off auditors to appoint it. Right. Okay. Well, I just wanted to make sure that if, you know, so my impression has been that um, all the charter changes I've seen proposed have been uh, passed. And maybe with some alteration along the way, but um, I just wanted to make sure that Middlebury didn't feel like they had run in, they couldn't get something, that you couldn't get something done that you had expected to get done because the, somehow the legislature said no. So It makes you wonder how it got into the VLCT policy uh, statement is what, what you're saying uh, as to what made that an issue that right. got into I mean, it's because it is a, as Victor points out, I mean, it's a, major shift and uh, <coughs> well, I don't know if it's a major shift I, th I think VLCT has had this policy in its mind before right. and right. I'm simply objecting to it yeah well um, major shift in terms of becoming hmm? home rule what a major shift in terms of making it home rule so that you no longer need uh, go to the legislature for I, it, it, it changes tends to remove the town from the state and I'm not sure that that's sure uh, well not constitutional for one thing. Um, I mean, if we made a charter change, for example, um, that implemented this and simply acted without legislative approval, um, um, that would be against the law. Mm -hmm. And I want to keep that law in, in um, and I, I don't think it's a matter of sentiment, it's a matter of principle. We have a system of government that, um, that is set up in this way. Uh, and uh, we're not an independent state. Uh, we're part of the state of Vermont. And, um, uh, and it seems to me that to have our charters approved I mean, before the revolution, they were approved by the, you know, by the crown of England, but that's changed now, I think. Uh, I think, I think the, the tradition of uh, an approval at a higher level or whatever more general level of, uh, of government is appropriate for the, for the form of government that we have. And I think this contradicts that, and so I, I find it an unacceptable principle. Sure. Okay. Well, I just wanted to m verify with the, the board that there hadn't been some sort of objectionable response on the part of the legislature, I don't know, in the last five, ten years, whatever, um, that I somehow missed somewhere along the line. Okay. Thank you. Amy, Robin, uh, did you have anything that uh, you noted in, in the uh, VLCT policy statements that, that uh, would, would cause question to you? I'm sort of just reviewing them now. <laughs> but I did actually wonder about um, maybe... Would you be willing to come forward, Amy? Just looking quickly through the transportation section, I'm wondering if it's if it's conflicting itself 
or I'm not really clear when it says not using transportation funding for ANR projects, but then it wants, I mean, one of the things that I'm worried about in terms of municipalities complying with water quality standards is the municipal roads and it's potential that you could say that those are ANR projects, but it's gonna come through transportation funding and I would, I'm not sure how much, I don't really know what they mean by that. And I would hate, there's another section that talks about transportation funding and <clears throat> water quality and I'm not sure what an ANR project is in that. That it's a little confusing to me. And I guess I'm wondering where are you where where are you at in this process with the league? So this is going before the VLCT uh, annual meeting on October second. And how do they take changes from individual select boards? The select board could submit a request form uh, to change or ask for more information. I suppose. Um, but our time is short because this is our last meeting before uh, the no October 3rd, sorry, um, yeah. VLCT meeting. That's the first, that's the only question I've come to so far in there that I don't, I just don't get it. Yeah, for clarity's sake. Yeah. yeah. And if, if there were increased state transportation funds that were actually allocated for water quality funding, I assume they wouldn't oppose that but it does say that they don't support transportation funds going to ANR projects. At the risk of venturing um, somewhere where I'm not an expert, I think what they're looking to say is that we have more projects, straight transportation projects, than the transportation fund can fund, and that um, water quality projects will need additional sources of revenue. Mm -hmm. Well, and I think it's a situation that unfortunately happens too often on a state nationwide basis is where, you know, I'm personally an, an advocate of increase. I, I like to pay for what I use. So I'm, a, I'm an advocate of increasing fuel taxes dedicated for road work. Mm -hmm. But I think that what VLCT is likely afraid of is that suddenly this increased pool of money gets taken and put into other funds general funds and, and pulled away from its original purpose. So um, I guess likewise, I don't know the details of all that, but I suspect that's what they're leaning toward. We have made changes. Remember last year that uh, Kathleen took care of, of requesting on behalf of uh, the select board in town of Middlebury um, a, a verbiage change in the um, marijuana policy, or um, I forget what the actual words were, but, but she was very successful in doing that. That said, um, is there anything, and Robin, or uh, Representative Shai, Shai do, you ha do you have anything that you would like to draw to the attention of the board as well? Thanks. Um, and I had identified that same one that Amy talked about and had some questions about that as well. Um, you know, I've read this really quickly and I wish I could give you some language, but I was looking under um, public safety and law enforcement and the legislature <coughs> passed some bills over the last couple of years that related to fair and impartial policing and systemic racism and things like that. And it would be nice if somewhere those issues were addressed in this um, policy or what the, what the league supports um, so that we um, we're paying more attention to it than we have been. We just had a legislator, um, an African-American woman, having to withdraw from her race again. She's been a legislator in Bennington for four years and so there were so many threats to her family um, that she finally decided for the safety of her family that she was not going to run again. And that, you know, we are better than that. So I'd like to see something in here, and I wish I had some language for it, but I think that's an important uh, issue to acknowledge somehow in public safety. Could you say that again, Robin? <laughs> that whole thing? No, 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 so, no just the, the particular words that you're looking for. 
Oh, well, that's what I don't know that I have the well, exact. Well, we have we, have we have some remark. legislation that we've passed regarding uh, fair and impartial policing um, and uh, one that has to do with systemic racism. And finding a way to address that or acknowledge those issues in here. Yeah, it's not addressed in here at all. No. And that is very timely, given everything we're reading. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Good is there point. anything else at uh, Senator Bray? I, I just wanted to check in on, um, so I'm on page 11, Water Resources 501 sub 3, uh, and it says VLCT supports a statewide authority for the centralized collection of impervious surface or per parcel fees development and implementation of clean water projects. So I don't know if the board has had a chance to um, uh, f sort of fully, I, I guess, fully appreciate what that uh, proposal is uh, proposing, and that is, so we we ha already have state government regulating uh, water quality issues, principally A and R, but also Agency of Agriculture, Food and Markets, and uh, this past session we were talking about ways of. Um, try to improve the long-term sustainable funding of, uh, you know, adequate to the task of meeting the Lake Champlain TMDL and all our other water quality work that we have to do. And one proposal was to create outside of a mainstream government a new authority. And so generally when people have been talking about a statewide authority, <coughs> they're meaning some kind of new entity. One of the models proposed was, uh, for instance, um, uh, the Vermont Housing and Conservation Board being an example of a, a legally chartered entity outside of mainline government in order to perform a particular task. And so we took a lot of testimony on it and couldn't find um, advantages to setting up such an entity. And since we already have a fully staffed Agency of Natural Resources and then a whole water quality group within Agency of Natural uh, uh, Agency of Agriculture, um, we ended up choosing to, to basically, and a simple way of saying it was, we already have staff, let's ask them to do the job rather than create another entity. And we couldn't really come up with compelling testimony to say that there was some particular advantage to putting something outside of mainline government, um, particularly because mainline government was at that point resistant to the notion of it. And so we needed people working hand in glove, um, not sort of boxing with one another. So it just didn't seem like a, um, a proposal that was gonna lead to better results. And so we didn't do that. And I'm just curious why, you know, it's a VLCT position. So since it's, it doesn't say much here, and I, I wanted to pause to talk about it a little, so in a way you know what you're voting for and uh, you know it could be I'm s I suspect it will come back up next <coughs> session um, and who knows where it will go but I just wanted to flag it thank you that's it and then what Senator Bray says that I mean, we already have agencies that are that are hard at work on this and to, if they're it like he says as I read it again now um, it's, it's really not clear if they're pro proposing that they would establish a new authority. Uh, I don't think we need any more authorities. <laughs> um, yeah, good point. It, I, you know, one was, thing. there was a whole working group outside of the legislature that um, brought this forward last fall or so, and I think hung on to the concept, argued for it through much of the session, but neither on the Senate side or the House side did it become a compelling argument. And um, generally, w we'd like to keep uh, 
instead of adding new government in order to take on the same task. Um, and another thing too, I'm refreshing my memory as I'm talking to you about this, the Agency of Agriculture had had nine people on water quality alone. So there had already been an increase in staff to be able to bring up the work effort in that area. And um, so we thought, uh, and a lot of those new positions were new. They were in the last year, year and a half. Um, so I think another piece of the thinking was, let's give uh, that, new imp that new staffing, that new way of working on water a chance to get more done before we create yet another entity. So that's, that's what I wanted to flag. Thank you. Kathleen, when did we get the actual um, draft <coughs> from VLCT? End of August. The end of August, and you have to vote on it October 2nd. So, so this is uh, what I have from the discussion. I have um, Victor uh, asking to uh, revise number two on the preamble of to end uh, it after where after the first comma so it would be local decision making semicolon and then continue on to number three Amy is looking for clarity on what uh, a and R project means and what the intent of um, uh, not using uh, transportation funds on that is um, Robin is looking for ways to uh, suggest that VLCT uh, support finding ways to support fair and impartial policing and address systematic racism. And Chris Bray uh, reports there is no advantage to setting up a statewide authority for centralized collection of impervious uh, surface uh, or per per fees. So those are that's the input. I have yeah, John's. Mm -hmm. Right. Which I would endorse, I think. Next, increasing the um, deadline from not, five to not ten. To increasing the not, not to increase. Right. Not that there's still an opportunity for them to post an abbreviated minutes and within five business days keeps it more, um, his, his argument was it <coughs> keeps it more in tune with what people expect in today's world okay. as far as timely news. Yeah, the other thing was having it posted in a printed form. And his argument there is there's still a lot of people who rely upon reading it in a printed form. Mm -hmm. uh, w one comment that I would make is it seems every year we're scrambling to get through these and get them um, approved. And I, I don't understand why they can't get them out to us a couple months in advance so we have time to um, you know maybe send it off to our legislators and, and actually circulate it a little bit more we could help them um, with giving proposed more clarity to some of the some of the bullets I think we could do a better job as um, in ensuring that the policy actually mirrors how we feel um, you know last year we scrambled to have a, a public uh, well, I agree session. with that just following our model for town meeting we have to have the warning as we're going to adopt it done at least 30 uh, and up to 40 days in advance of the meeting so it would be good to have um, at least that much notice before they put out the draft policy so we could comment <coughs> on uh, what yeah. the policy committees have recommended I might propose that, that uh, if they can't agree to um, amend those things that we have concern with or to pull, pull them out for this year that we would abstain hoping that we could uh, that we could be more participative in the future with with better um, notice be my thought Laura. <laughs> I would, I would definitely support that. And um, it was very useful, again, to look at the breadth of this, and it helps me really think broadly about all the issues and our relationship between state and 
local government. And I really do appreciate the Vermont League of Cities and Towns for the resource that they are. They are an incredible resource and they really do try to help us. Um, so I do have a couple of other recommend, recommended language changes. Um, and one of them is under education. So on page two, the first statement where it says that the league supports a simple and transparent education finance system that reduces and reforms the property tax burden over the long term and that more closely links voters' actions in approving budgets to the taxes they pay to fund their school districts. I think that went a little too far, you know, because um, it's not simple um, and I, to be equitable. And I just recommend a, a simple change, which is don't say simple. You know, um, I think transparent is good, but just strike the word simple. You know, and just have it read a transparent education finance system. And then I would also recommend deleting that reduces and reforms a property tax burden over the long term and that more closely. <coughs> and maybe, and then just pick it up there, you know, that says that closely links voters' actions and approving budgets to the taxes they pay to fund their school districts. Because I think that's the spirit of it is really again, trying to help us understand how education financing works. So I don't know if that was clear. So okay. it's really if, if, two if deletions. Could. So delete a simple and, like those words, and delete that reduces and reforms the property tax burden over the long term and that more closely. Just have it read the rest. So it reads a transparent education finance system that, that closely links, links voters' actions yes. and approving budgets okay. to the taxes you can they keep pay. The word closely. That closely links voters' actions and approving budgets. Yes. Yes. I recommend that. Um, and I'm glad that they're pursuing universal health care coverage. Remember that before on page um, under safe. Uh, driving initiatives, so three, let's see what page that is. Uh, Under public safety. Public safety. Page seven. Seven. So I was looking for something that spoke to. Page eight, 305. Oh yeah, page eight, safe driving initiatives driving initiatives something that spoke to multiple users of the road you know and and that what we're looking for is support for standards for safe commuting by all road users and for us that can translate as better shoulders road striping standards things like that so I, I thought it might be good to add that point, so maybe a point under policy, let's see. So it would be an additional point, point four, supporting standards for safe commuting by all road users. Senator Bray? It's, it's in here for questions. It is. It's <coughs> page four under transportation. If this is incurring adoption of the complete streets program, does okay. that cover, I, you know, I, I don't know. Where did you page see that? Page, uh, page four, number five. Sorry, at the bottom of four. I don't know all the elements of complete streets, but I question <coughs> that they encourage just what you're talking about. Okay. I think. Okay. Um, okay. It could. Yeah, it's, it's hard. It's sort of like um, under energy when they say that we'll do whatever we can to address climate change. Well, that could take into account a lot of things that Chip and Jack were trying to reference by having us add the resolution, the 350.org resolution. Um, I don't know, you know, so there, I think we've had enough discussion on it <laughs> to understand the spirit of it and hope that we're going in the right direction. Okay, well, I guess, you know, we've had a lot of discussion about this thing here, so I guess I would make a motion to um, 
close the discussion and um, uh, authorize Kathleen as our representative to bring these recommendations to the suggestions of the VLCT uh, for implementation. I'll second. With the changes? With the, With the changes that, that Kathleen has noted, yes, and have been presented. Kathleen, do you have questions of uh, kind of the intent of, of that motion? Okay. Um, that's good. What, what I'll probably do is write a letter uh, summarizing all of these things and send it to the league in advance so they have it. Excellent. It worked well last year. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Comments on the motion? There are none. All in favor of uh, the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Okay. Uh, it was really nice having you as part of that discussion, and thank you for taking time and coming in. Um, approval of the check warrants. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. So I would motion to approve the total expenditures in the amount of $4,819,580.21, consisting of $4,715,508.31 for accounts payable and $104,071.90 for payroll for the period of August 29th, 2018 through, August, through September 11th, 2018. Second. Moved and seconded. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. <coughs> Those opposed? Okay. Kathleen, town manager's report. One thing to note tonight, um, that there will be a public input meeting on landscape design for the Triangle Park section of the Town Green and Printer's Alley on Wednesday, September 19th at 6.30 here in the large conference room. What was that again? Sorry. This, this is going to be the se second public meeting on Triangle Park and Printer's Alley landscape design. And when is that? Next Wednesday. Next Wednesday at 6.30. I said next Sorry. Wednesday? Mm-hmm. What date is that? 19th. 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 That's next Wednesday? Today is the... Oh, okay. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> is that it? Yes, that's it. Wow. Board member concerns for HOD. All the things. Okay. Heather? I'm all set. Victor. Yeah, I I would like to first of all commend Angela Lynn for his um, editorial in, in the last um, um, Addison Independent. And what pleased me first of all was um, the positive nature of of, of the editorial, I mean the fact that he was, uh, and 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 really that that uh, what the editorial was all about was um, looking for opportunities um, to improve the town um, as a result of of of, of, of this of this project <coughs> ongoing project, and um, he proposed some um, um, you know some some examples of, of how this might be done and I, I think the principle he, he, he was working on was this that um, there's going to be an awful lot of work done in town for example he he, um, he noted the, the roadway that's been put in uh, <coughs> along the riverfront on, on the uh, uh, by the railroad bank and so on uh, so that they can get to the be behind the tell block and wondered whether, you know, rather than having that dismantled at the end of uh, at the end of the project, whether it could be kept as a as a, a path, pedestrian bicycle um, path, um, and and really, I think making use of the um, of of the riverfront as uh, as a, as a scenic area in town. Um, and I, I mean, I. I'm not suggesting that we, we adopt that plan, but I, I think 
the, the opportunity, the fact that, that things are being done in town like that, uh, that may be work that could be really preserved and implemented um, and, um, and turned into something really very useful to the town because I, I think he, he points out and I think we all agree that uh, in the past um, the town really uh, had turned its back on the river and uh, now I, I think uh, uh, we're learning to face the other way and, and it's, a, it's a delight. I mean, I, I must say as a resident of the Marble Works that uh, the Riverside Park has been a, a wonderful um, example of how the riverfront can be used. Now, I'm not suggesting that this be done, but I'm suggesting that um, we have a, a greater opportunity. In that sense, I'm, I'm really trying to urge the public to come forward with, uh, with ideas that, of how um, it may be possible to um, really uh, improve the town and make use of, of, particularly in this instance, making use of work that's already, that's already been done that, that, that could be uh, that could be employed in a very, in a very, I think, uh, positive way. Uh, so I guess it's not only Angelo's uh, example, but also the spirit of of of, um, of um, a positive attitude toward the project and 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 what, in fact, um, uh, can be achieved. I, I think. Um, uh, uh, this is uh, sort of the last part of the downtown uh, that will be remade when this project is ended. And it would be a shame if we let it pass without making sure that um, uh, this became one of the best downtown areas in New England. I mean, and that's, uh, I suppose, what I'm aiming for as a kind of visionary. Uh, but there are real things that can be done. I'm not. Um, uh, just making this as a as a throw out but um, and and I would hope that there will be an opportunity for conversations with the state um, and the railroad uh, to begin to make positive plans about this that's all okay thank you Victor oh, I think it's a it's a call to think greater yes you know, and, I, and that's and I appreciate that as well. Uh, mine is not that big, uh, but crosswalks on Washington Street over by Shaw's and the Co-op, and it seems that suddenly two of them have appeared in very short order. Um, you know, going back in origin, there was the crosswalk just to the east of the entrance to the Shaw's parking lot. That's where the curb cut was done in the crosswalk, and then it was shifted to the west side of the Co-op entrance. Well now all of a sudden there's a sign that's popped up where the old one used to be that said pedestrian crossing. And then there's also the actual crossing. So I'm watching this just as, as a pedestrian walking through there and it's creating this um, kind of interesting little extra element of confusion what's already kind of a problematic area. So I guess it's a matter of cleaning up that a little bit. Okay, Laura. I just wanted to speak to that. I think that sometimes they place those signs ahead or of the crosswalk to give the driver enough time. Well, I understand that's the reason, but the way it is right I now, see people that still remember the old crosswalk. Right, so, so that particular one really is, but I think that was probably their idea. And they do rotate those signs, and maybe it would be helpful if it's time to rotate that. Rotate them where it belongs. <laughs> <laughs> so. you know, I mean, I, I don't want to stick them in the middle of a block, and that's not the right place. It's, uh, put them where they belong so they're effective. Yeah. So, um, so I think your point is well taken. Until it's really formalized, you know, like what if we're, if we're going to plan something else for that whole little block there, which I know that that's been discussed. Um, so. I know that Governor Scott was with us today and that he stopped at the electric charging station in the Marble Works and announced the grant opportunity. And I know that Middlebury is 
really well positioned in terms of saying that we have all these electric charging stations and they keep more and keep coming online and that's great you know because we definitely want to be a transportation transforma transformation town and um, we're going to be having a, a check-in of the transportation task force on september 20th at five o'clock at the addison county regional planning commission office building to do that check-in. So some of that work was looking at how we could encourage more people to use the bus, or looking at how to make the bus system uh, more responsive, you know, through on-demand, more on-demand bus circuits, or having a circulator. So we'll be checking in on that again. Um, we'll be looking at the rail platform discussion, and I know that there's more uh, public hearing and surveying on that that's coming up. So if anyone that's watching tonight is interested and you hadn't had a chance to participate before, you can still come in to the conversation um, on September 20th and see if there's a project that you're called to. <laughs> so, so I just wanted to mention that. Okay, thank you. Lindsay? All right. Uh, so we do have need for an executive session this uh, this evening. Um, so do you want me to Laura, would you okay. take us into executive session? Sure. In accordance with Vermont's open meeting law, the following two motions are um, in order prior to entering into executive session. So in accordance with that, I move that the board find that premature general knowledge of the consideration of contracts and pending litigation would clearly place the select board at a substantial disadvantage because the select board risks disclosing its litigation strategy if it discusses the contracts and pending litigation in public. Second. Moved and seconded. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Okay. I further move that the board enter into executive session to discuss contracts and pending litigation under the provisions of Title I, Section 313A1 of the Vermont Statutes. Second. All in favor? Signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Okay. So uh, 827 will enter executive session.